God sent his son, born of a woman, so that we might receive adoption as children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. So let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may be fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithful united in mind and heart through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen Amen. now please be seated for the readings Now today reading is um, the readings which is set for the um, 9th of January. A reading from the first letter of Saint John. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he, sets, he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son as a saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love, and anyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. Love will come to its perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear, because even in this world we have become as he is. In love, There can be no fear, but fear is driven out by perfect love, because to fear is to a perfect punishment, and anyone who is afraid is still imperfect in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to the psalm, all nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord, All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgments to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. The kings of Tarshish 
and the sea coast shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate, all nations shall serve him. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak, and save the lives of the poor. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After the 5,000 had eaten and were filled, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to Beth Bethsaida while he himself sent the crowd away. After saying goodbye to them, he went off into the hills to pray. When evening came, the boat was far out on the lake, and he was alone on the land. He could see they were worn out with rowing, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them walking on the lake. He was going to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost, and cried out, for they had all seen him and were terrified. But he at once spoke to them and said, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind dropped. They were utterly and completely dumbfounded, because they had not seen what the miracle of the loaves meant. Their minds were closed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, please be seated. And a good afternoon, everyone. Well, good afternoon. And a good afternoon, everyone who may, um, you know, follow um, us, who may join us um, through this, you know, the live streaming. Um, tonight's, well, why did I say tonight? This afternoon's, um, today's reading, um, the first reading from the St. John's, the letter of St. John, it tells us um, the nature of love and then what effect that we can actually have. You know, if you still have some fear about the world, about us being in the world, that means, um, you know, I believe that includes all the worries that we have as a human being, as we live in this world, and also uh, the ultimate, you know, um, the fear of death, because the end of our journey on earth is actually death. And once we died, of course, you know, um, that's the next chapter, but you know, for those who don't actually believe in that, and then for them, well, the end of this world is actually the death. And then therefore, human, we do have some fear about the end of our own lives, which is absolutely fine. I can understand it. But what St. John says is very clear. If you have any fear, that is the evidence of that still you don't fully engage with that love because if we love God God lives in us and the Lord that whom we love is the one who actually overcame the power of death the ultimate fear of human beings and if we bring him inside our heart we don't need to have so much fear on that we may be a bit, you know, frustrated. You know, that's understandable, I think. I'm sure that you know, St. John would understand that. But what he wanted to say is, if we have him living inside our heart, that means truly 
we will be able to enjoy, to be with him, living the life of him. So, wonderful expression, I live, but I'm not live. It is not me who living this life. Of course, you know, we're all human beings. I live my own lives. That's my decision, whatever I do. But still, we trust there is something deep inside our heart. And then if we don't have that trust, whatever happens to us, we will be swarmed like that. And then the being a kind of, you know, we know, sharp, affected by the wind, that common expression, that is so easy. But still, even if we feel that the Jesus Christ is living in us, or even, you know, like, um, you know, the Jesus disciples, the story that we heard from our gospel reading today, even if we see the miracles right in front of us, miracle happened, more than 5,000 people were being fed and they were completely filled. But still, because the Jesus disciples' minds were shut, they could not actually see that miracle. They didn't see it. And then and therefore, immediately after that, quite interesting, isn't it? Jesus sent the disciples first. Now you go first. And then he said goodbye. He sent people away back to their homes. And then what he did? He went to pray. And then that evening, the fourth night watch, very dark night, possibly there must be a kind of, you know, um, moons around. There must be a moonlight. And then Jesus was crossing there, crossing the lake, walking on the lake to meet them. And then Jesus knew that his disciples were struggling because they had to rowing against the wind, all worn out. And then that was the moment when they also saw Jesus Christ. Because they were, their minds were shut. That means because they could not actually understand the meaning of Jesus living in us, the Lord living in me, they could not see anything. And then they saw him, and then they thought it was a ghost. Completely, I'm sorry, freaked out, screaming around, and then Jesus didn't pass. He walked towards them and said, Courage! Where that courage we can find. Dear my brothers and sisters, if you need courage, think about this question. Where can we find that courage now? Living in 21st century, struggling with this COVID virus. Okay, let's put the COVID virus business aside. We know that our lives are full of troubles. How can we me and you and you, how can we find this courage? Therefore, the message of St. John is so relevant to us today for all those who live in this life. Only courage we can find is from loving Jesus and knowing that he lives in me and I in him. If we cannot understand this meaning of being communion with our Lord and also communion with all the saints in heaven, including the faithful departed, we won't be able to have courage. And then if we don't have courage in our heart, who will know first? You and me. We will know first. So this afternoon, I'd like to encourage you to think about the meaning of courage. Where can we find that courage? Who is your courage? Where do you find your own courage? I just do that. Oh, courage, courage, courage. I can do that. That's a different level of courage that we're talking about. Something that we can build on our whole life on it. The fundamental foundation of our faith. If we don't have that cornerstone, that foundation, we won't be able to have 
courage, my brothers and sisters. So let us ponder, let us ponder the story that we read. A letter of St. John. If you are at home now, I'm going to encourage you to actually open your Bible. St. John's letter is on the back of the, um, you know, the Bible, the end of, you know, the last part of, you know, um, of course, not the last part, you know, the further back down um, in, in the New Testament. This John is not the John the Baptist, of course. It's not the John the Evangelist. John's letter, letter of John, chapter 4, verses 11 until 18. Now, I'd like to encourage you to actually read that by yourselves, not just listening from, from this service, I'd like to encourage you to read it by yourselves and then try to spend some time to find out where is your source of courage. Without that courage, worshipping the Lord, living the life of Christian, that doesn't make sense. We can't do it. And we're also relying on the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now let us pray um, together for the church and um, for the, um, um, the world where we live, for the people around us, and including um, you know, the community based here in this church, the parish of St. George Enfield in Freezy Water, and wherever you are, we pray for our neighbours and your friends, and also we remember those who are struggling or those who need our prayers. In particular, I'd like to encourage you to pray today for those who are struggling with COVID virus. Yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, we have lost um, more than 1,000 people. I think it was you know, 1,300 people died in a day because of the COVID. And then world out there, there are so many people who actually still don't see the danger of this virus. We pray for the enlightenment. They may know this is truly devastated, difficult time for all of us. So now, brothers and sisters, let us offer our prayer together. Let us pray for the church throughout the whole world. Especially we pray for our Orthodox brothers and sisters who are actually celebrating their Christmas um, the season now. All the Christian leaders may work together because we believe in one Lord, one faith and one baptism. Pray for those who are struggling to find this courage. We may be able to feel the love of God more deeply in our heart. Pray for our church leaders. In particular, we pray for our bishops as they lead us in this most difficult time. And pray for those churches who are affected by the coronavirus. Especially we pray um, for the parish churches or the, any Christian communities that had to come up with this decision of um, closing their church doors down because that is what they think and feel is the most safest way to do it. Pray for the members of those churches who might be saddened. They may have some patience. And also pray for those who are still operating and offering the public worship they may have to keep the safety. Pray for our bishops, as I asked you, um, especially the Sarah and then Bishop Rob, and all the clergy and then the faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continually pray for the world where we live. Pray for peace, prosperity, and security, and safety. We pray for the people living in America, China, Northern Africa, the 
Middle East, where there is full of political uncertainties there. Pray for peace in between nations and tribes and between different religions. We may be able to find the meaning of sharing that humanity. Pray for those who are suffering under the tyranny. People, those who are wrongly judged and oppressed. Pray for those who are struggling with any kinds of violence, including, nowadays, especially in this nation, the domestic violence. And may our younger generation also, they may find hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for this faithful community based here, based in this parish, St. George's Enfield. Pray for each and every one of us, including those who may join through our virtual service live streaming. Pray for all the members of our community here in this, freeze, in this area and beyond. We also remember in our prayers the former members of this parish. Pray for the future of this parish. As we are struggling financially, we need the encouragement. May the Lord give us strength so that we may go through this difficult time together. We may be able to win this fight with love from our Lord Jesus. We also pray for our all neighbouring Christian churches around us. Parishes of St. Peter and Paul's and St. James and, and Jesus Church around um, as our neighbouring parishes. And also for our ecumenical brothers and sisters worshipping in our local Methodist, Baptist Church. And also remember the ministers and the friends in Albany Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are in particular need at this time from our parish prayer cycle. We pray for Heather Anderson, Pauline Stavers, Susie Athino, Lorna English, Sajid Tosin, Luke Sheehan, Diana Jones, Angela Bell, Cindy Hart, Angela Fairclough, Claudia Boner, Barbara Baker, Michael Shine, and Lunn. Father Brian McMahon, Catherine Paul, Jim Wallace, Bob Wallace, Arthur James, Adi Asiwaju, Janet Greenwood, Helen Clark, the Constantino family, Ian Francis, Bill Bird, Robert Gerson, Aaron Deering, Brian, Ruby Bensey, Baby Unu, John Thecker, Peter Thorndike, and Teresa Boxall. And also we remember all those who have been asked of our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for the faithful departed. Adrian White, Gillian Tier, Maureen Pickworth, Lisa Wishhusen, Andy Hoyle, Glenfield, Mark Pickering, and Fubara Salima, recently departed. And also we remember the souls of Ernest Brown, Mary Bullowell, and Lovetta Thomas as it's their own anniversaries of death. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. Amen. And in silence, let us also commend our own private prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? 
Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace in a very safe way. Peace be with you. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who are sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you things. He broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you things. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. George, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. And by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Now the Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.